Seamus O'Cromper. Um, Lady Mayor, councillors, uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we, um, among our submissions, was a letter which we sent on February the 14th, so that's almost three months ago. Most of the detailed points that we have to make are addressed in that letter, but unfortunately, we haven't received any reply. Um, so those are the detailed points. We'd like to concentrate on the, the overarching things. You've been listening to submissions on uh, the eastern suburbs probably for most of the morning, so I'm sure you've had the same responses from many, many people again and again. Uh, the feedback that we get from our members and from local residents is that the decision on the hot water pools is hugely supportive and something that everyone in the eastern suburbs would be very, very glad to see because basically, as you've heard again this morning, very little has been done over the last six years. And if you look at the projects that are planned for the following year, uh, you have approximately 20 projects at a cost of, what is it, $550 million. Two of those are really for the eastern suburbs, and one of them, the QE2 centre, would be servicing a lot bigger area. So that's one of the things uh, we'd like to say. On the overall, um, the bigger picture here is that there seems to be, forgive me for saying it, a systematic policy of discrimination against the East. And you can see that in what people have been saying this morning, the condition of the roads, the condition of housing, the removal of infrastructure, the total contrast between what you see in Sumner and what you see across the bridge when you go into Brighton and the, the Brighton Peninsula. So uh, we would like to see a lot more funds allocated to doing what should have been done in 2012 and 2013. There's a very small amount has been devoted to drainage and flood protection, which would be the, the biggest priority in our particular area. Uh, we had Margareta Wallström from the UNISDR uh, here several years ago. A point she made was that one of the biggest threats for cities over the next 100 years will be urban flooding. And we should be well of there for this. We had this in 2014 with the Flockton Basin and with the, the area-wide flooding we had there. We have very high tidal um, groundwater in the eastern suburbs. No one has addressed this problem. We have stop banks which are temporary, which have been there since 2011. Nothing has been done to basically strengthen them. Uh, we have mixed messages from the council saying that the stop banks may be raised, which would increase the risk to residents, because if they collapse, then you have flash flooding. They could be relocated to somewhere else, or they could be abandoned. So. Um, what people need to know is what the council actually plans to do. We have um, raised these points again and again. We've had no response from the council. Uh, we hear what is going to happen post hoc when signs are put up at the end of um, the stop bank areas telling us that so many trees are going to be removed and they're going to be strengthened and strengthened. Uh, we need to know clearly and definitively what the plan is for the eastern areas, and we haven't got any of that. So we would ask you to consider that in the allocation of funding for the next year. As I said, most of the detailed information is in the letter that we sent three months ago. We've had no response to any of the points we made, and it's not the first time we've raised these questions, Lady Mayor, as you know. Uh, we have a total vacuum of information coming from you. What is the long-term plan? What is the strategy? What are you going to do about very, very difficult issues that people are living with? Of course, everyone from Brighton is very excited at the prospect of having hot water salt pools and a repair to the boardwalk where people can... There are great things in the area which we love, 
but we need a long-term plan to ensure that people can still live there because the problem of urban flooding isn't going to go away. No one has really addressed it and if people cannot have long-term security for their future, then they will move out. The area is becoming a slum as it is and that's largely a responsibility of council because we have as-is properties that are being sold because uh, they have been settled on a cash settlement basis by insurance companies. They're being bought up by property speculators. The area is becoming a giant slum and uh, this is largely the responsibility of the earthquake authorities, council, EQC and central government. So we see the area going down and down and down and no effort to, to stop the progress of slumification. So this really needs to be addressed as a major issue for the, the following year and for the long-term plan. And we need clarity and concrete statements as to what is going to be done to, to stop this process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. And uh, we, we will be um, responding um, to your submission, but also the specific letter as I've posted on Facebook a couple of times. It has been hugely challenging. A number of the questions that you've asked have actually already been answered in correspondence and a number of the meetings that we've already held. But actually, the issues that you raise are far deeper than that. And the point that you made, which is absolutely 100% correct, is that we need a strategic approach to the entire um, area in terms of stop banks. Um, it's not just the area of South Brighton. It's actually the, the question around South Shore. It's also the question of further up um, the river uh, catchment. And these are all, those areas are all residential red zone. And how they connect and how we relate to engaging with the community about the future of those areas and how they are protected and how they, well, I mean, mitigated because total protection, as you've just said, is not possible in the future environment. So how we resolve all those issues have to go through a process of engaging very directly with our communities, and that process is um, underway. So, but this, uh, is, this is what we heard in 2012 and 2013 and 2014 yes. and 2015. That's right. That's right. And we it's still have no the, clear picture of the what, the what you're going to do about it. The Greater Christchurch Regeneration Act wasn't passed until last year. I'm saying to you that South Shore and South Brighton, a strategic approach will be worked out between Re Regenerate Christchurch and the Christchurch City Council. We are not walking away from our responsibility and we are not handing over the responsibility for engaging with our communities to Regenerate Christchurch in the South Brighton area which was not red zoned. There are people who could argue, quite legitimately in my view, that there are elements of that area that should have been red zoned, but it wasn't. So we actually have to find a way of working with our communities and resolving these issues together. I've explained the difficulties that I've had with responding to your letter. Elements have been um, responded to. I've done a lot of research personally into it so that I'm able to give a very full response and provide all of the documentation that supports all of the information that it's based on. But, you know, um, I'm one person, I've got uh, a relatively challenging um, uh, role and this has landed finally in the week of the annual plan. But you put the letter into the annual plan process and I'm undertaking that you will get a fulsome reply mm -hmm. um, as soon as I'm able to do so. Could I draw attention to one point which is also in the well, submission? Well, no, you've gone well over time. Okay, right. I, yeah. I, I feel that that's, um, that's sufficient. Mm -hmm. If you want to follow up with just a quick email to the Secretariat explaining what that particular element that you want to draw to people's attention, then they will circulate that to councillors. Mm -hmm. it's, it's already there. It's the tectonic, the shallow movement. Yes, thank which you. Which is the map. Mm. Yep, we will respond. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, Gav Gavin and Eleanor Bodger. Yep, I'll leave it to you.